Thank you so much, Ted and David Knapp. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. It is. It is pretty cool because you know after a big Christmas Eve service and coming back the next Sunday morning at zero dark thirty and trying to find folks who are willing to step up to play it's it's, it's a blessing I, I'm super thankful so thank you guys also think Ted has found his next hairdo if he can follow after his son and <laughs> I don't know we'll see hey my name is Pastor Jeremy welcome here we're so glad you're here to worship with us today and uh, if you're just joining us online as well welcome here um, we are finishing up today our Advent series or our Christmas series talking about Jesus And so as you're just joining us, I want to pray and invite you in and and continue to worship him. Father, we thank you for Jesus, your son, and we pray, God, that today he would communicate his truth uh, to your people. Lord, we know you love us, and we know you have good things in store. We're sorry for the times we take our eyes off you, and we pray that this morning you would redirect our glance and our gaze and cause it to be fixed and focused and fixated on your son lord help us to love him more than anything else and want him more than anything else and we pray that your spirit would be in us in this this day and the rest of our lives in jesus name amen so i brought my handy dandy uh easel out here with me this morning and what i'd like to do is ask you some questions but my handwriting is terrible so i need a little help um I'm looking for Vanna White or somebody else just like that. Like, young man, you in the... No, no. Eh? Let's give it a go. Let's see how you do. Come on up. All right. We got our Vanna. Okay. Remind me your first name again. Noah. Excellent. Pen? All right. So what I want to do this morning is ask you some questions about light, and particularly I want to ask the children to go first, and the adults can fill in the blanks after that, but let me ask you kiddos, and you have to kind of be loud because they're a mask. I realize in the first service I like ask questions, and it's like, like, I have no idea what that was. So help me out, shout it out. What are, what, I mean, just general observations what is, what does light do? What do you know about light? Go ahead. It helps you see. There we go. We got one, Noah. You can just write C. Yeah, let's go with one word, and I'll see if I can bring them back. All right. Oh, you were right. Your handwriting is like mine. All right. pretty awful. Yeah. All right, that's Okay. All right, it helps you see. What else? What else do we know about light? It overcomes, okay, it's greater than darkness. I don't know, just write greater or something. I don't know. All right, kiddos, what do you know? What, what, do you, what else do you know about light? Is that it? It gives energy. What would you say? It glows. Okay, we'll get that one in just a minute. All right, Noah, maybe we need some help here, buddy. No. Glows. G. Sorry, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but you're on the spot. <laughs> uh, what else did we say? It grows plants. That's a good one. That's actually coming back. Greater, good. Uh, it grows things like gr. We went glows and grows now. All right, you're doing a good job. Don't worry. It's more fun with two people, anyways. All right. What else? What else do we know about light? It's warm. There's a good one. Okay, adults, it's your turn. I see the adults. Some of them don't wait their turn, so you guys can just jump in now. Go ahead, adults. I know you're anxious to get on this. What else do we know about light? We got Jesus. We got what? All right, so Jesus and hope. We're going to put those two up there. All right, what else, adults? There are definitely some smart adults in here, and I know you guys have been holding back a little bit. So if you're a physicist and you saw something fancy about light, go ahead. Go for it. It's a particle and a wave, okay? But just You can just write wave. Just write wave. It's fast. There's one. We got fast. What's that? 
It reflects. Okay, that's a good one. I like reflects. We can apply that. It reveals. Very good. So we got reflects and reveals. However it's spelled, it, we'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Reflects and reveals. What else? It guides. It abolishes darkness. Excellent. So reflects, reveals. Uh, just write darkness and write an X through it. How about that? Sure. That's easier. All right, what else? It's multicolored. It's beautiful, right? Yeah, so we can write beauty or multicolored. Anything else? We're having fun with Noah up here. He's sweating bullets. Now he knows what it feels like. No, I'm, I'm normally like this. Okay. So don't worry. All right. <laughs> Good. Anything else on light? It's bright. There's one more. Okay, we'll, we'll let you be done after that. B-R-I-G-H-T. Right. All right, got it. All right, thank you, sir. Give Noah a hand. Good job, Noah. Everybody else was shaking their head, and he came up, so thank you. These are some things we know about light. It helps us see. It glows. It's greater than darkness. It, it grows things. It is warm. It provides hope. Jesus is a light. Light is a particle or a wave. It's fast, it reflects, it reveals, it guides, it's beautiful, it's multicolored, and it's bright. Some other things that came across um, my path when I was thinking about light this week are these. Um, light controls us. It controls us in many ways. Even though in this world where we walk into a room, we flip a switch, and we're like, oh, there's light, or we turn on our headlights, there's light. At the same time, it still controls the seasons. It determines winter and spring summer and fall. This last Monday, the 21st of December, was the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year. So light does a lot of different things. It controls our cycles like sleeping and waking. Typically, we do that in conjunction with the light. It is a source of life. It grows things. You know, like the plants will not grow if they don't have light. And yet, our light, the light that we know, comes from the sun or the stars or is reflected off the moon. And in that sense, we would say it has a source, like it comes from somewhere, that this light that we're used to using to see things is not necessarily original in and of itself, but it comes from somewhere. It illuminates darkness. It reveals things. We use expressions like it brings to light. And not only those things which are hidden in the physical darkness, but also those things which are hidden in our souls as well. For example, so apart from the soul, like if I'm walking through my bedroom late at night and I stub my toe and I flip on the switch, all of a sudden I see something that wasn't there before that I didn't notice. That is the revelatory nature of light. And so we begin to speak of light not only physically, but also symbolically or metaphorically too, that it brings things to our attention that we did not see before. And some of those things are dark and ugly, and yet we need to clear them out of our life and out of our path. It is convicting. It cleanses. It symbolizes as well. It symbolizes God's blessing. It symbolizes safety. It symbolizes truth and holiness and so many other. And into this context, Jesus comes and speaks these words in John chapter 8, verse 12, and says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of of life. Jesus is ultimately the light of the world, but having said that, there is so much more than what we see on the surface. And so what I'd like to do over the next few moments is sort of unpack what this means, both to the original hearers, the people in that context, in that day and age, and then subsequently to us as well, and how we would apply it to our lives going forward in 20. 21. If you're like me, you're starting to think about the new year, and maybe you're ambitious or driven or goal-oriented, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And 
what I want to do for a moment this morning is just step back and look at those things and say, if they're aligned with what God is trying to do, then by all means, go forward. But if it's just us and our own ambition, our own desires, and our own pride, then let's take a moment to evaluate and say, where does God really want us to go in 2021? So I think the answer to that question is from darkness to light. God is always moving his people from darkness to light. So that'll be the structure of this morning's sermon. Number one, from darkness. Number two, to the light, from darkness and to the light. But as I said, I want to set it in its original context, particularly um, Jesus and his listeners. So the time of the year which Jesus was giving this um, teaching was around the harvest. So some think around September. And it was a particular festival at that time. Often there's festivals in the harvest. We used to live in a little town uh, where they had a soybean fest. There are other places in the world that they have different festivals. But this festival was particular for the Jewish people because it was significant not only for the harvest and the time of year, but also their history. And this festival was called the Festival of Tabernacles. People also call it the festival of tents or shelters or booths. And the reason is, you've probably seen it on the news, they celebrate it by leaving their homes, even if they just go to their backyard, and setting up a shelter, maybe of palm or date branches or something like that, and staying in those tents, in those shelters, or in those um, booths. And we who are in our world would probably ask the question, well, why in the world would they do something like that? Like, I mean, you got the, the great, I've actually spoken to someone from India and they cannot figure out why Americans go camping. <laughs> They're like, you have these amazing homes with running water and everything else. Why do you go out into the woods and sleep in a tent? Good question. <laughs> we would probably ask this question of the Jewish people this time of year, like it's been so hard to get to the promised land. You fought many battles and you have lots of enemies and you're finally established. Why would you go live in these shelters? And the answer is to remember what God had brought them through. See, as they're moving through the wilderness, exiting Egypt and coming into the promised land and the process that God had laid out for him, they stayed not in permanent dwellings, but in these booths, in these shelters. And as a result, um, God wanted them to remember that his deliverance came in this way. And so at every time at this year, they would build these shelters and go out and dwell in them. So Jesus is speaking into this context, but that's not all. You see, at this time, there was also the lighting of these great big candlesticks. Today, we often refer to them like as menorahs, but these were huge, and these were on the Temple Mount, and this is the signal of the beginning of this festival. And what would happen is the priest would bring a ladder and put it up against the candlestick at the top of the Temple Mount and ascend and light the candles. And as he did, that light would be shown not only on the worshipers that are congregating below, but throughout the whole city. You could see this light from far, far away. And so this light is bringing in the harvest and it is calling God's people to worship. And in comes Jesus. Some commentators speculate right at the bottom of this candlestick and says, I am the light of the world. Everyone should be looking to him. He helps us to see he is bright with the beauty of God. He is greater than all else. He grows us. He grows our world. He provides warmth. He provides hope. His name is Jesus. Um, he is sweeping the world with a wave of God's grace. He is fast, even though we think he's slow. Sometimes, suddenly, he does things. He re we should be reflective of him. He reveals, he guides, he is beautiful and bright. Here is Jesus, the light of the world. Now, that's bringing in some of the context, but that's not bringing in all of it because when he says these sorts of things, if you follow the Gospel of John, people get mad at him. They're like, why are you so freaking out about this guy who just said he's light? I mean, a lot of them, teachers could say they're light, and we'd say, yeah, they bring light. No, 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 
This claim is far greater than I am just revealing things to you. What instead he is saying is, I am the revelation. We got done just a moment ago saying that all the other sources, all the other lights we know have a source. If you turn on a flashlight, there's batteries. If you have a candle, there's a wick. If you have, you know, a light bulb, there's electricity. But Jesus says none of that. Instead, he says, I am the light. Like with capital letters that he himself is the source of light itself. Light is that which Jesus spoke into existence and comes from him. He is the light. And so when he says, let there be light, there is. Because he commands and it comes to be. Jesus is making an extraordinary claim claim here. The same one that Yahweh or God himself gave to Moses when he was revealing who he was to the children of Israel. And God comes and says, Moses, I am. This is the very words that Jesus has just spoken to these people. And they're getting it. They're like, whoa, that's a pretty significant claim. Well, listen to this. Here's the fire of God in Exodus chapter 13. Here's where this festival of tabernacles is coming from. And here's what Jesus is telling people that he is. When the, okay, so the children of Israel are enslaved. They're being delivered. And verse 17 of Exodus chapter 13. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. But God led the people around by the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. And the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt, equipped for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for Joseph had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones with you from here. And they moved on from Succoth and encamped, encamped in those festivals, or those booths at Etham, on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way. And here is the light, here is the fire that Jesus is claiming to be. And by night a pillar of fire to give them light that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not part from the people. And Jesus comes to them and says, I am the light. Follow that pillar of fire. Jesus himself is the light. He is the source. He is that thing which we should follow. And this has been foreshadowed and hinted at and, and predicted long before. And now Jesus is coming and saying, I am. I am here. Here it is. Here is the light. Follow me. That's why in Colossians, the Apostle Paul says this, Jesus has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Jesus has come and he himself is the light of the world. Here at Midland Free, we've said that in the coming year, our mission is to be a gospel-centered family where everyone we encounter moves closer to Jesus every day. As the light of the world, we want to move one step closer to Jesus, and we want to help others do that too. And so as you begin to think about 2021 and what's coming up for you and moving from darkness to light, even if it's only one tiny step, I want to give you a few application questions to consider going forward. So if Jesus is the light, and if you really do want to follow him, and if you want to make changes and grow in 2021, here are a few questions for you. Number one, if Jesus is light and if Jesus is your joy, let me ask you this. Where do we, you and I, typically go to feel better? 
Where do you go to feel better when you're down? Is your first reaction to reach for something or to do something? Or is it to go to Jesus? Where do you go? What is your first reaction? Where does your first go to when you want to feel better? If Jesus is the light and Jesus is the joy and you want to move from darkness to light, the first place we should go would be him. Another question, how much time do I spend with him? How much time do I spend in the light? How much time do I spend with Jesus? Now, I recognize we all have obligations. We have jobs. We have laundry. We have clothing. We have whatever. There's real life stuff that God expects us to attend to. He's not saying you can put everything down and only be with Jesus all day. But in those things, to be with him, and when you have the opportunity or when you can set aside the time, by all means, give him that special time. It's just like we do with everything else. Like, for example, if you have a boss at work, at some point you have to meet with them. And probably they'll set up the frequency, whether it's weekly or monthly or whatever, but at some point you get to spend time with them. If you have children at home, you know, Maybe you can sneak in a shower or a snack here and there, but eventually they're going to be in your business and they're going to be in your space and you have to spend time with them. If you have a husband or a wife, probably if you're in a halfway decent marriage, on occasion you go on a date and you make it intentional and you say, on this time, on this day, we're going to spend time together. And so I'm not saying that every one of us every day has to spend eight to ten hours in prayer. I'm just saying in 2021, do something. Do something. Be intentional about spending time with Jesus. Even if you say, I'm only going to read one Bible verse per day, that's better than nothing. How much time do you spend in the light? Another one is, how excited are you to talk about him? Now, this is kind of a hard one because, I mean, frankly, just being really honest, for me, it's both work and life, you know? So I don't know how it is for you, but sometimes I come home from work, I want to be done with work, right? I was not talking about church stuff right now. I want to go work in the garage, you know? Just to be honest, just saying. But here's the thing. If, if I take that and apply that to myself, and we take that and apply that to us, then when the spiritual topic comes up, what do we do? Do we look the other way? Do we change the subject? We find something convenient in the other room to work on instead? Or do we quiet down, enter in, engage in the conversation, and seek whatever blessing might be there? This is not something to run from. This is something to run to. It's not from the light into the darkness, but from the darkness into the light. Here's your chance. You might get blessed. Who knows? Stick around. You might hear something. How, mu- how excited am I to talk about Jesus. I know we're excited to talk about other things. Hey, guess what I got for Christmas? Or guess how my team's doing? Or what do you think the weather's going to do? But Jesus? How excited am I to talk about him? Where am I holding back? For 2021, what have I held back in 2020 that I'm just like, ah, I'm not really ready to give that up yet. I want to hold on to that. That's mine. <laughs> Lord, play in this box over here, please. But don't go there. What have I been holding back from Jesus that I need to willingly sacrifice at his feet and submit to him in in this coming year? Maybe it's my finances, maybe it's my family, maybe it's my spare time, my hobbies, my entertainment, my joy, whatever, but what is it that I have been holding back? If Jesus is the light, I need to go to him and bring all that I have into his presence. How can I learn more about him? I've heard some people talking to me now about last year's New Year's resolutions and, oh, I was going to read through the Bible. I didn't quite make it, or I really did, and I'm so glad I did. You know, I want to encourage you to look at those resolutions and say, okay, here's what I want to do. Now, here's what God calls me to do. How do those things line up? Let's say, for example, I want to get a PhD in literature. I don't, okay? I don't. (laughs) Well, let's just say I did. Think of all the reading I would have to do and how many 
papers I'd have to write, how many books I'd have to go through, and am I going to be doing that every night of the week and not paying attention to my family? Or is God calling me to spend more time with my family and less time with this ambitious goal over here? Where is God directing me and what is most in line with his heart and his desire for my life? And are those my desires? If so, if God wants me to get that PhD, go for it. But if not, then maybe I need to die to that dream and die to self and say yes to whatever the Lord has. Even though this isn't as grand or glorious, it's going to sanctify me better and be better for me in the end. So, what am I after this year? What am I learning? What am I listening to? What am I listening to? Uh, When we lived in Canada, near Vancouver, there were zero Christian radio stations. Zero. The only Christian radio station you could get was to um, have one imported from across the line in Washington. But here in Midland, Michigan, I mean... I can put five dials on my radio that have Christian music. That gives me a lot of options if a sappy song comes on. Okay? If it's not so great, I can keep changing until I find one. We have options. What are you listening to? Is it talk about Jesus or does it not? What are you watching? What are you watching? I know entertainment's everywhere, and we've gone away from the movies and into subscriptions and Amazon Prime and Hulu and YouTube and whatever else. But what are you watching? Oh, come on, Pastor Jeremy. No, really. What are you watching? Would you invite Jesus to sit down and watch it with you? Because he is. You believe in the Holy Spirit and his presence in your life, then Jesus is with you watching whatever you're watching. It's on your computer, your phone, your TV, or whatever. What are you watching? Even if it's not terrible. Is it edifying? Is it bringing God glory? Is it leaving you fulfilled and leading you into the light? Or do you need to move from the darkness to the light? Here's another one. Where do I go when I'm suffering? What do I rely on to ease my pain? It's a big question for 2020. I hope it won't be a big question for 2021, but who knows? I heard one author this week say, it's actually a sin to pine for the good old days because that denies the hope and faith of Christianity that says what's ahead is going to be better. God's purpose in the world is being accomplished even if it's through these bad things. And so the hope to go back and not experience that is a hope in contradiction to what he's doing. And whatever he's doing, we need to submit to and follow. What do I rely on in my suffering? What distracts me? What distracts me? Where does my mind go if there's a moment of um, non-activity? What distracts me? Where do my thoughts lead me? Am I moving from darkness or to light? And last but certainly not least, let me ask you this question. What regular relational deposits are you making in your walk with Jesus Christ? What regular relational deposits are you making? We said earlier, you know, like with children, you have to tend to them with your spouse. You have to tend to them with your boss. You have to tend to him. Eventually... If you're not doing something, the light begins to flicker. If you want that light growing bright in your life, then you need to continue to stoke the flame and provide the fuel and let Jesus shine brightly in you. What regular relational deposits are you making? I'd encourage you, if there's something you do every day, whether it's take your vitamins or get a drink of water before you go to bed at night or whatever, to think of those rhythms and see if you can tie it somehow your relationship with Jesus. Tie your daily activities. Every day you go out the door and you push the garage door button. Okay, every day I go out and I push the button, I'm going to say this verse or I'm going to whatever. But build in to the rhythm of your life 
regular relational deposits with Jesus. We at Midland Free, we aspire to be a gospel-centered family where everyone grows closer to Jesus every day. Jesus came, he's here, he is the light, he brought the light, and that light is available for you. But you have to grab onto it. Many of you know we had a Christmas Eve service at our church a while back. And uh, since we weren't passing around um, candles or exchanging or sharing surfaces, we used glow sticks. So I have a few extra glow sticks left over. And I'm interested in knowing if any of you kiddos, are there kiddos out there who are interested in an extra glow stick? Does anybody want a glow stick? Okay, come on up. Grab a glow stick if you want one. They're right down front, right up here. I think I have enough, but I'm not sure. Yeah. All right. It's okay. I think we'll, we'll see how we do. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Okay, Oren, do you know how those work? How do you work it? Can you show me? You shake it. Do you have to break it to make it work? Can you do that, or do you want me to do yours? I'll do yours. Okay, you ready? You can keep two. I see extras. Okay, thank you for sharing. Ready? Oh, there's one. Here, can I have the other? Oh, you got it? Try it again. Try it again. You want to try it again? Break it really hard. Use your knee. Oh, yes. Come on. I'll do it. All right, we got it. <laughs> Here you go. Ready? Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. Yep, I'll do mine too. Shake it, shake it. Yeah. So here's the thing. While everybody's getting their glow sticks. Oh, I get another one. Thank you. All right. Got two. You got it, guys? All right, I didn't know how this was going to go, but I think I'm going to make my point here. We have the light. Like, we have these glow sticks. But if I, if I left the light in my pocket and I never did anything with it, it does no good, right? At least for me. But if I draw it out and I snap it open, all of a sudden it shines and I take advantage of it. That's what I'm asking you to do, and that's what I'm hoping you'll do, and that's what I'm hoping our church will do together in 2021, that we will move one step closer to the light, we will move from darkness to light, that we will not let this thing sit inside of us and hide it under a bushel, but that we will bring it out, break it open, and share it with the world. We don't want to be those people sitting underneath the candle when Jesus comes back and we're like, uh, oh shoot, we don't have any oil. We want to be waiting and exuberant and excited and saying, yes, Lord, we have been sharing your light with everyone we meet and trying to draw closer to you every single day so that when you come back according to your purpose and your plan and shine your light on our world, then we know once and for all we will be fully saved and redeemed. We will never have to dwell in any other shelter again, but instead we will dwell in the light and warmth of your love forever and ever. Jesus is the light. He glows. He's greater. He's beautiful. He's warm. He gives hope. He's fast. He ref we should reflect him. He reveals things to us. He guides us. He's beautiful and bright. May Jesus be the light of your life this year. Father, we thank you and praise you for our blessed hope and only Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the light that he brings to our lives, the hope that he gives, the joy and warmth that he provides. I pray, Lord, that we re really, truly take advantage of it. I, I don't know why I look away. I don't know why I ignore it. I don't know why I go to other things. But I pray that you would help me to go first and foremost to you. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.